<laughs> yeah, we're still doing the Marvels content, baby. Let's go, Bree. We can make it. We can make money. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. It's crazy because you wouldn't think of a movie that's so the Marvels. You can't just keep saying that it's bad or that it's the Marvel's new low or that it's pretty much a straightforward attack and abomination to your senses as a whole. That's so whack. And in reality, it's kind of sad watching the MCU put out such an uninspired fart of a movie. And while I've already touched on the movie at length in my full review, I can still reiterate here that I definitely don't think that it's the worst MCU movie of all time. Shit, it's not even the worst MCU movie in its own face. It's never too late to stop being a dick. But we are not here to talk about the Marvels. We're here to talk about what comes next. I did a video like this with a similar style and format a couple months ago after Black Panther Wakanda Forever, exploring the landscape of what was to become of Marvel entering Phase 5. What was the slate for this once beholden and cherished franchise? Was the continuous shit on a screen going to continue? And more importantly, were we, us the audience, the paying customers, going to continue to get persecuted and shamed for simply expecting better? But that doesn't matter anymore because we all know how that turned out. Stroll down this carpet with that menacing look that he has. What are you most excited for fans to see about it? Uh, Kang. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had to follow Jonathan Majors, the most charismatic man alive. As you can tell, we're doing great over here. What makes it even worse is that the majority of the projects, mostly and more than likely future terrible Disney Plus shows for their failing streaming service and terrible and questionably still employed creative team, didn't even get released, fortunately for us. But don't worry lad, there are some returning favorites that we get to talk about. Nice. But before we get into it, Unlike in the last video, we're only going to be discussing projects slated for 2024. Much like Disney Star Wars fans, the best in what sometimes seems like the only thing the MCU and their fandom can really look forward to is their own fan theories and hypotheticals. It's really, really sad. Unlucky. But let's stay focused on the task at hand and start with... Look at you guys. Look at you. I see you in the back. All being tricked by a trailer. We have seen this before. Doctor Strange Mom had a W trailer. Poop movie. Black Widow had a W trailer. Poop movie. Remember the Eternals trailer? Poop! Just remember, delays, 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 baby. You'll see that's going to be a pretty common theme throughout these projects. After being delayed three four, five times already, and probably still a delay too little. But congratulations to Echo. The show is now slated for a January release date, and that looks like it's gonna stick. <laughs> yeah, a month known for some of Hollywood's most prestigious releases. But the bigger issue is that Marvel has shown so little faith in the project. I mean, yeah, we just got a trailer that's a far cry from what I imagine the show was actually pitched as, hence the delays. But a trailer will not fool me. Marvel has heard the complaints and they are definitely going to try to capitalize on that daredevil tone. But come on, it's like a bad joke coming from the same studio division that released She-Hulk in Secret Invasion. While I'm definitely willing to eat crow on this one if the show does somehow manage to have a semblance of the character writing that was presented in the Daredevil show in every episode, I highly, highly doubt that's actually going to be the case. Look at that, you probably thought I was going to save this one for last, huh? Nah, I'm just going in order. But in reality, I don't think that we as a collective audience have ever seen this level of weight, the amount of stakes, and we'll see with time, 
but basically an almost insurmountable mountain of expectations thrown onto one sole movie by its own studio as much as Deadpool 3. At this point, I would assume that the majority of us have seen the many, many different spoilers and plot threads that this movie will or will not try to tackle, and I imagine it's going to stay that way until we get the first teaser trailer. But putting the movie, or I guess the plot aside for a second, you can tell that Disney, Marvel, Kevin Feige, and yes to a degree, even us, the audience, are gearing up for Deadpool 3 to maybe, if we're lucky, be a return to form. How dare you! As I mentioned and stressed the expectations before because they are real, an already successful franchise and character now being enveloped into a bigger conglomerate that is now asked to run the show and save the company and bring Hugh Jackman into the mix, and it's hard to know if this was always a part of the plan. The bigger picture that Kevin Feige and Marvel used to strive at and create new benchmarks when it comes to the concept of cinematic universes as a whole. Or the question is, has that of the problem simply exceeded the shame and cry of desperation in order to save what was once lost? Eh, it's hard to know. Ah, nice. Alright, so Black Cap is an interesting discussion, especially for me personally. Much like I mentioned earlier and how, much like the Disney Star Wars fans, the best in what sometimes seems like the only thing the MCU and their fandom can look forward to is their own fan theories and hypotheticals. Yeah, that's me with this movie specifically. The character of Black Cap, in theory, is pretty epic. In one of these rare instances where I feel like a change or, let's say, a rebranding of the character could really do wonders for Sam. Thank Miles Morales, and I know that's a really big deal on the internet, but just thank Miles Morales as a character. Adapting more of the black culture, and I guess for the sake of the majority of the people watching this video, swag. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I think it's crucial going forward. What makes Miles Morales work so well is that he's not Peter. He's his own character, and that's the route I think the MCU needs to go down if they're trying to make this character even a semblance of his predecessor. Which does suck, because Disney is really, really, really bad at adapting Black culture. I think they just think black culture is racism itself or something. I don't know. I guess in twerking. As for the plot, who cares as of right now? That shit's gonna change more than your girlfriend's Starbucks order. For now, they just need to help and fix the character and audience relationship with my man Black Cat. After not receiving an appearance in any MCU project post his own, they need to work on that fast, diligently, and without mistakes. Oh, oh Agatha. In a way, a show much like Deadpool 3, where rumored plot synopsis, character introductions, and theoretical stakes and important MCU world building spread faster than gossip in a middle school. But unlike Deadpool 3, that's because of Delays, delays, delays. It's the theme again, baby. It's rearing its ugly head. The thing is, it's easy for rumors to run amok when there is no plan. And Agatha and whatever they decide to call it by the recording of this video is a perfect character to illustrate that problem. With Agatha not even being the most interesting newly introduced character in WandaVision. It's hard to think from a consumer perspective how integral to the MCU or even Wanda Agatha is going to be going forward without the reasoning feeling completely contrived and unnecessary. And with her character in-universe falling into the same descent as the previously mentioned Black Cap, who goes insane lapses between on-screen appearances in an age of the MCU where screen time is no issue, there's just no demand for Agatha. And I feel like only because of pride, that the MCU doesn't really want to can this show like Warner Brothers did with Batwoman. And I'm not even saying to recoup money, it's already lost in theory. 
But in order to just not waste resources, manpower, and brain cells on a fledgling character in her story. But I guess they're still making Echo, so... Congratulations, Agatha. I guess you'll always have a case. At the end of the day, it's truly hard to predict what's going to happen to the landscape and fandom of the MCU after the Marvels. Unlike Lucasfilm, whether you like it or not, good plan or bad plan, Kevin Feige and Marvel still have a vision that they're sticking to, and no matter how many movies flop, receive fan backlash, or age poorly, the content machine isn't going to stop. And while I highlighted earlier that Marvel seems to have all of their eggs in the Deadpool basket, hoping Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman can be that ace card in order to save the franchise and the brand as a whole, I don't think they've realized, but much like with relationships, it's hard to gain back trust once you've lost it. And in an entry like Deadpool 3, even if good or successful, it wouldn't even begin to start the apology process let alone enter a path of growth with the audience that's been gaslit and jaded so many times in the past couple years. I don't know. I guess good luck, Marvel. See you in July. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I want to keep the outro pretty short, so I guess go watch some of my other The Marvels content. The Hunger Games prequel is also a thing. Don't forget that because I know that I did. Oh, go follow me on Twitter. I'm going to start promoting that a little bit more because I'm on that all the time. It's definitely my most used social media. But again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today.